Set. You're good. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Good evening and welcome inside Meridian Center here in St. Catharines, Ontario, home of the 2021 Canada Summer Games and home tonight to game number 10 of the CEBL Summer Series between the 0-2 Ottawa Blackjacks and the undefeated Fraser Valley Bandits who sit at 2-0. Thank you for joining us here on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca and TSN 1200 Radio in Ottawa. I am Sean Woodley, joined once again by former Canadian national teamer Javon Shepard. Javon, we've got a fun one on our hands here today. Oh, definitely, definitely. Should be a good one. Absolutely. We've got the Black Jacks sitting at 0-2, kind of desperate right now. Have to get up a, pick up a win here if they want to, you know, look, there, there's, there's time here. There's still four games left for them to pick up wins, but this is a really important game for the Blackjacks. The Fraser Valley Bandits, meanwhile, kind of the surprise of the tournament so far. A veteran crew, they've come in, they're 2-0, brought a ton of energy to the game as well. Coming up after the break, we're gonna introduce you to the third member of our broadcast team, Amy Otterberg, who has the scoop on a big roster development for Ottawa. That, plus we got the keys to the game, a check-in with the Bandits, head coach Kyle Julius, and more here on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, and the TSN 1200 radio up in Ottawa. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We look forward to a really great game here. Stick around. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Coltac Law. to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. Blackjacks fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit theblackjacks.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. Bandits fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit thebandits.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. Welcome back inside Meridian Center. Sean Willie, Javon Shepard here with you. Let's bring in the third member of our broadcast team, Amy Otterberg, who's got an update on a big roster development for the Ottawa Blackjacks. Amy. Yeah, thanks, Sean. The big news out of Ottawa today is that Phil Scrub has officially been deactivated for the remainder of their summer series due to his contract in the French Jeep Elite League. Now, Phil was one of the leaders on this team over those first two games, averaging 16 points and just over five assists. So I spoke to Black Jacks head coach Oz Genty before this game, and he acknowledged, he said, it certainly hurts to lose not only the player, but the pedigree that Phil brings to the table. But he's confident he's got a bunch of other guys that can step up to the plate and as far as, uh, as far as on the court he smiled and chuckled and said listen I'm really happy that our offense isn't designated for one guy to get up all the shots 
he definitely imagines a lot of guys getting a lot more touches. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Amy. A big development there for Ottawa. But as you mentioned, still a lot of guys on this team who can get it done. And they're going to have to get it done tonight, Javon, as yes, the sir. Summer Series continues on. The Blackjacks are 0-2, the lone winless team here in St. Catharines. And there's not a lot of time here for them to turn things around. Of course, a reminder of the CEBL Summer Series format. There is six games each of these teams are playing, every team in the league one time through. And at the end of those six games, the top two teams will receive a bye to the semifinals. The next four teams will be in the quarters. And the last place team, which is currently the Ottawa Blackjacks, will go home without playing for the chance at the title. And that is, of course, uh, not something you want if you're the expansion Blackjacks here, who came in as sort of one of the favorites in this tournament, considering the pedigree of a lot of the guys. Dave Smart, of course, the, the guy who's sort of behind, the architect behind this team. We know all about Dave Smart, Javon. Oh, that we do, you know, he's a legend, he's a legend, he's an icon, um, you can't say enough about him, so, you know, he's, he constructed this team, and obviously he had a vision, so I'm sure these guys will turn it around and put things together, and, you know, they have a lot of talent, they have some depth, and they have some experience, so, you know, they will do well putting it together. Absolutely, let's check back in with Amy Audubon, who's courtside with Kyle Julius, head coach of the Fraser Valley Bandits. Thank you, Sean. Coach, first I want to ask about Cam Forte. He's averaging 29 over those first two, exclusively from the mid-range. What are you seeing out there as to how he's finding so much success? I mean, if you look at Cam and, and his resume in general, it's how he scores. It's, it's, he doesn't do anything you know, outside 10 or 12 feet. He's a great teammate, and he's locked in, and he's getting touches where we want him to get touches. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure somebody's going to start doing something different to him, and we'll have to make some adjustments. And I think if he starts moving the ball well, we can be really effective. I'm assuming everyone thinks you're playing an Ottawa team that is starving for a win right for now. Sure, and, sure. and so what yeah. is your biggest advantage coming into this matchup? No advantage. They have it. I mean, you know, they got the backs against the wall. I mean, it's still early in the tournament. It's like we're talking about a seven-game series in general. You know, it's, you get up 2-0. I've been up 2-0 in a seven-game series and lost. I've been down 2-0 or 0-2, and, and they come back and won. So you can't take anybody lightly. They, they've got nothing to lose. And, and right now we're 2-0, so we've got a lot to lose. We've we got to lock in and execute. Always laser focused, Coach. Good to talk thanks, to you. Amy. We'll go back to you guys. Thanks so much, Amy, and thanks to Coach Julius for taking some time. Javon, let's get to your keys of the game here. Let's start out with the Ottawa Blackjacks. Again, 0-2 needing to pick up a win here. Ottawa needs to do a good job taking care of the basketball. Fraser Valley is a team that, that forces 11.5 turnovers per game, per game. So that's going to be the key for Ottawa is, you know, limit that. Limited touches for Forte. Forte, he, he's had 40 touches over the last uh, over the last two games. Sorry, um, averaging 29 points and 60 on uh, 65% shooting from the field. This is a guy you have to stop. Know your individual scouting report. There's going to be a lot of help in the post. When guys are when guys are closing out, you're going to have to know who you're who you're closing out to. Are you closing out to a shooter? Or are you closing out to a guy that likes to penetrate? Absolutely. And let's take it again to look at the keys of the game for the Fraser Valley Bandits. It's simple for Fraser Valley. Guard for 40 minutes. That's been their identity. That's what you have to stick to. Play Fraser Valley basketball. It's simple. And don't relax. You know, you're up to all right now. It would be easy to let up. Now is the time you have to press the gas on the pedal. When you talk about Fraser Valley basketball, what does that constitute? That is, you know, a team that's tough, a team that's gritty, a team that plays def defense, and a team that's going to pressure you 40 minutes of the game, 94 feet. Absolutely. Let's take a look now at the starting lineups for each of these teams. Of course, a big change for Ottawa with Phil Scrub no longer being, and they've kind of shaken things up here. You got Johnny Berhanameska, the former Ottawa U star, starting at the point guard. You've got Thomas Scrub in the backcourt alongside Olivier Hanlon as well. You've got Shaquille Keith, who will take over uh, at the four spot, and then Kyle Landry in the middle. Uh, the Northern Arizona grad in 2008, the 10 year pro and three on three star Kyle Landry. Now for Fraser Valley, it's Jahens Manigat, Marcus Capers, Malcolm DeVivier, Cameron Forte, who you mentioned, at leading the tournament in 29 points and 10 boards for Cam Forte through two games, and Junior Cadugan, who has been an absolute blast to watch so far in this tournament as Fraser Valley. Again, 2 0, kind of surprising, I'm not going to lie. When we did our CEBL show podcast last week, I had Fraser Valley coming seventh in this group that was silly they're very good they seem to be kind of thriving on the fact that no one really sort of took them seriously coming into here and they very much need to be taken seriously now the officials for today's game will be tony turnbull kevin moore and Vern bevel and uh, we get closer to the start of the tip-off here 22 seconds to go here until tip-off and a reminder that the official game ball of the cebl is spalding get your new cebl official official replica ball today by visiting cebl 
CEBL.ca. Lots of great stuff over there at CEBL.ca for you. In addition to those balls you can pick up, you can also find stats, scores, and schedules for the upcoming games here in the CEBL Summer Series. As the buzzer goes and the teams will hit the court here, you're going to be looking at the Fraser Valley Bandits in orange with blue trim and the Ottawa Blackjacks in white with red trim. And the Blackjacks here looking to pick up a win, their first here at the CEBL Summer Series, trying to take down the lone undefeated squad, the Fraser Valley Bandits. Thanks again for joining us here on cbcsports.ca, CBC Gem, and on radio on TSN 1200 in Ottawa. We really appreciate you being along here tonight as we get ready to tip this one off between the Fraser Valley Bandits and Ottawa Blackjacks. Javon, I'm excited for this one. We've been talking all day. This is a big one. It's going to be, there's stakes here. It's pretty desperate. Absolutely. You know, both of these teams have two great opportunities in front of them. Fraser Valley on one end is a team that can, you know, they can stretch, create a gap between themselves and the rest of the pack and potentially put themselves in a position that they can be, you know, heading into playoffs in a, you know, first or second position uh, seating. Whereas Ottawa, their backs against the wall, 0-2, but with a victory tonight, they can put themselves right into the middle of the pack. Capers pu pushes the jump ball towards Malcolm DeVivier. No good there, and it's grabbed by Kyle Landry, and Ottawa will walk up for their first possession with Olivier Hanlon, the former Utah, Jra Utah Jazz second rounder. Bringing it up, here's Shaquille Keith. He'll back down, tries to put it up off glass, gets his own miss, gets it again, and Shaquille Keith puts it away. You know what, Keith is a guy that he's going to be aggressive. He lives for this. A lot of these guys he's played against, he's grown up against. And, you know, he has a chip on his shoulder. He wants to prove that I'm here to stay and I'm here to play. And this 0-2 start, you know, it doesn't really indicate much. Shaquille Keith there got a delay of game warning for the Black Jacks by tapping the ball away after it went in. 2 nothing early on here. Cameron Forte, he's got Landry on him. He'll post up, kicks it out. Devivier. Drives and an offensive foul called on DeVivier as Brahana Mescal got in his way, and it's going to be Ottawa ball. Hey, you know what? That's a great start by, by Ottawa. On the kickout right that we spoke about this in the pregame, the keys of our game is knowing who you're closing out to. That was an opportunity for, for Ottawa to, they knew DeVivier was going to penetrate, step in front of him, get a charge. Absolutely. Olivier Halen walking it up here. Figure he's going to take on a pretty big load with Phil Scrub out of the lineup now as Brahana Mescal has it. He's got it on the right wing. He's got capers on him. He'll drive left, pulls for three. That's good, Johnny Berhanna Mescal. Johnny Buckets, as he's colloquially Johnny known. Johnny Buckets, Mescal. That's a guy I'd like to see him and Olivier Hanlon really, you know, really get loose tonight because those guys, are, you know, they're professional scorers, what I call them. Absolutely. And these guys can, you know, break things open for them, especially in the absence of, of Phil Scrub. Cameron Forte loses it but gets it back, tries to put up a lefty floater. That's no good, and it's going to be Ottawa ball as Shaquille Keith walks it up. Here's Brahena Mescal from the left corner for three. That is good, and an 8-0 start here for the Blackjacks. Great Here's job by Keith finding the weak side. Cross-court pass actually open Brahena Mescal. Here's Forte, he's gonna drive left. He turns around, spins, kicks to the corner. Here's Manigat drives back to Forte around the free throw line, tries to go up, and Landry stonewalls him, and it's Ottawa ball once again. Here's Handlin. And that's going to be a really good matchup. Landry's a guy that you know, he's has experience. He's played across the world. He knows the scouting report. He's a veteran. He's a guy that's going to know how to how to grab how to guard. Sorry, Forte. Brahana Mescal feeling hot. Puts it up. A third straight triple for Johnny Brahana Mescal. And that is a quick timeout for Kyle Julius as it's 11-0 Fraser Valley early on here. The rest of the first quarter coming up on the other side of the media timeout here on CBCSports.ca, CBC Gem, and TSN 1200. It was a code 10, hard water again. Worst part is, Claire was unaware. Ah. <clears throat> hey, Culligan, our water makes my skin and hair feel like I'm 90. OK, are you 90? I'm not. OK, secondly, how do you feel about high efficiency water softeners from Culligan Water? What? And thirdly, how do you feel about smoother skin and luxurious hair? Goodly. I feel very good about that. That's the power of water. Stay soft, right? <laughs> you stay soft. <clears throat> good water doesn't just come to you. Oh, wait, in this case, yes, it did. the Ottawa Blackjacks on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the CEPL's newest club has to offer.
Follow the Fraser Valley Bandits on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the Bandits have to offer. Back inside, Meridian Center, 11-0 early on here for the Ottawa Blackjacks as they're playing like a team that's 0-2 in need of a win. As the Bandits walk it up, Marcus Capers has it. He gives it to Jehens Manigat. Now to the left wing for DeVivier. And that's swatted away there, grabbed by Thomas Scrub. He's got Junior Cadugan in his shirt, but Scrub walks it up. Here's Olivier Hanlon now as Ottawa gets back, trying to extend this lead out. Ottawa's done a really good job early on being aggressive. And it's, ironically, that's, that's the DNA of, of Fraser Valley. So it's interesting to see, even coming out and opening up with a little press early on, coming out the timeout. Shaquille Keith missed a driving layup. It's then tapped out of bounds by Phil Scrub as he tries to get the offensive board, and it's going to be Fraser Valley ball, still 11-0 here. Walking it up is Marcus Capers. He'll drive to the left. He hands it off there to DeVivier. Back up to the top of the arc. Over to the right wing for Kadugan. Kadugan into the corner. DeVivier for three. No good. Grabbed there by Jean-Emmanuel Pierre-Charles. Just checked into the game for Kyle Landry. Ottawa's doing a really good job of keeping Fra Fraser Valley on the perimeter. Just moving the ball without, you know, they, they need to get some paint touches. That's been their, that's been their identity over the last couple of, of games, getting the ball inside to Forte. Or just getting some paint touches and, and, and getting baskets around, you know, getting some easy baskets around the rim and then kicking out. Thomas Scrub gets fouled going up for a lefty floater. He hits it and is going to go to the line for an and one opportunity. Take the chance to remind you that this week the CBL has been trending across Canada. Join the conversation by using the hashtag Our Game. Thomas Scrub to the line here, looking to make this 14 0. And he does. And a great start here for Ottawa as Fraser Valley has yet to get their bearings. Junior Cadugan now. Over three minutes into this one, still no buckets on the board for Fraser Valley. Cadugan on the left wing, takes a handoff back from Capers. He'll get it over to the wing. Manigat for three. That is good, and the Bandits are on the board. Jahan's Manigat with the triple. Break the ice. There Ottawa's is. also doing a really good job. You know, they have Phil, Scru sorry, Tommy Scrub um, playing the point guard, but I see on defensively they also have him guarding uh, Junior Kadugan, pretty much putting a lot of pressure on him, denying him early on. It looks like they're trying to get the ball out of his hands and have Capers bring the basketball up. Scrub backs down Kadugan, using the size advantage a few inches he's got over Kadugan there and scores with the left hand. It's up to 16 to three. Here is Kadugan, he'll drive. That's swatted away by Jean-Emmanuel Pierre-Charles. 16 on the clock, the Bandits are gonna get it on the baseline. They've done a good job. They've really, you know, guys have really identified their scouting report playing drivers for, for, playing guys that are gonna penetrate for the drive. As you see there, Pierre-Charles timed Junior Kadugan for the block as he was getting to the basket. Merrick Clausen checks in here for Junior Kadugan. Clawson was really good in the last game for the Bandits, their 87-77 win over Saskatchewan. In the corner, Manigat goes up for a triple. He's fouled there, and he's going to go to the line. You never shoot want three. a shoot to foul a shooter. That's a tough one for Tutu. Yeah, that's Mooney's Tutu recently checked into the game, number five for Ottawa, a graduate of Carleton University this past year, and so getting the, uh, the rookie treatment there, yeah, the rookie fouling foul. Manigat in the corner. Manigat hits the first. Behens Manigat, 6-1 guard from Ottawa, Ontario. Of course, was a Creighton Blue Jay, if you recall. One of that, that sort of wave, there was a really great wave in the early part of the 2010s of Canadians in the NCAA that really sort of made their name, and Manigat was one of those guys. Good player, really good player. Played this most recent season in Hungary. I actually he knocks down to, I had a third. conversation with Kyle, Coach Kyle Julius about him, and he mentioned, you know, Manigat's a guy that's going to, he, he's going to thrive in a system. And, you know, I, I asked, because they are fast-paced. It's a fast-paced team. And I asked, is he going to fit your system? He said, you know what, we have spots on the floor for him where he can thrive. And as long as he gets to those spots, he's going to get open shots, and he, he's, he's going to know his role, and that's going to be the key for him. Jack Keith tries to post up. He can't quite complete the pass. It's going to be Fraser Valley ball underneath the basket after it goes out of bounds. 16 to 6, the Ottawa Blackjacks lead here early on. Yeah, and again they have they have Tommy Scrub guarding Klassen, 
just denying him entry so that they can get the basketball out of the point guard's hands, force somebody else to bring up the ball and make plays. Man again, a little pick and roll action with Cam Forte. Forte can't get himself on the board, tries to collect his miss. It's off of a blackjack and it's gonna be Bandit's ball. 14 seconds on the shot clock here, baseline inbound, Merrick Lawson on the ball. He looks for an option. It's in the corner, Manigat. Gets it down to Forte, nine on the clock. He's posting up Pierre Charles. Scrub comes to double. We got a whistle. You know what, they're, they're, they're making it tough on Forte. They're making it extremely tough on him. There he wasn't able to get his, his the basketball in a comfortable position in a, with a paint touch of forcing him out of the key. And then as soon as, he's, as soon as he gets close to the key, to, you know, where in his comfort zone, they're sending a double at him. Just I'm not sure if it's a double yet, but you know, there's two players coming at him. There was a foul there called on Pierre Charles, his first. Claussen drives, and they're going to call an offensive foul on Merrick Claussen. As much as Ottawa's had a great offensive start tonight, they've been extremely good on defense. I, I have to say that. We've seen two char sorry, three charges so far in just the first quarter. That was Thomas Scrub getting in the lane there to get in front as Olivier Hanlon checks back in after a quick breather. Brahana Mescal takes a seat, as does Pierre Charles. TJ Lall will come into the game. TJ Lall, another 2020 Carlton grad, one of three on this team, including Munis Tutu and Yassine Joseph. Lall will inbound for Ottawa, gets it to Tutu. He'll walk it up, he's got Claussen on him, full court. Rookie guard, we've seen a lot of good rookie play here over the last couple of days in this league. It's interesting to see what Tutu is able to bring to the table. I'm sure he's competed against a lot of these guys, and I, and I harp on a guy, Rayshon Brown from Saskatchewan. He's really over, he's really, you know, surprised me. Olivier Hanlon misses a three in the left corner. Duvivier picks it up. He's going to walk it up, finds Manigat up top. Capers on the left wing for three. That's good. Marcus Capers knocking it down. Capers, he's a, he's a guy that does it all for this team. He can rebound, he can pass, make shots. You need those type of guys on your team, utility guys that are going to be glue guys and pick up pick up wherever you need something, right? A season pro, too, is Marcus Capers. Graduated Washington State in 2012, an eight-year pro. A reminder that you can pick up the latest gear from your favorite team exclusively from New Era, the official merchandise partner of the CEBL, and it's seven teams across Canada. Visit CEBL.ca and click on Shop. Both the Blackjacks and the Bandits have good-looking threads. <laughs> Highly <laughs> recommend going to pick up some of their gear. I need myself a jersey. I need to. I need a jersey of each. Yeah, just get like the whole array. Yeah. <laughs> still, it's still the ha the Hamilton Honey Badgers black pinstripe ones that are the ones to beat for me. But I really like these Fraser Valley oranges. Here is Brahana Mescal just freshly checked back in. He'll drive, can't get the floater to go off the back iron. A little unorthodox, but that's what he does. I mean, he, great job using the screen and just cutting back to, to cut off his defender. Merrick Clawson around the free throw line. He's sizing up T.J. Law, pulls up for three. That is good. Merrick Clawson cans the triple. And Fraser Valley doing a good job of pulling it back after that tough 13-0 start. And it's 16-12 to now. You know, Clawson's a guy you really have to watch out for. The other night against Saskatchewan, when he got in in the third quarter, he's the one that really turned this, this game around for them. You know, he's averaging 4.5 assists right now. He's got to get guys involved, can make shots. And you know, he's a great defender. He's a really gritty, tough defender. Brahana Mescal drives, can't get it to go off glass off the window. Off glass off the window, that's redundant. Here's Cam Forte driving, has it stripped. Tom Scrub going the other way. Finds Hanlon, he'll drive. Tries to go underneath, he's fouled going up by Manigat. Manigat is uh, none too pleased with the call, but Olivier Hanlon's gonna go to the line here to shoot two. I'm pretty sure Thomas Scrub has watched a lot of film on Forte. <laughs> on that last transition play, I don't even think he played defense. He just stuck him, sat in front of the left hand, and uh, Forte was a little bit out of control there. I mean, when a guy scores 29 points a game over the first two, you're kind of negligent if you're not spending <laughs> extra time to guard him, right, and spending extra focus on that, on that film study. Looks as though that's paying off here for Ottawa. What's interesting to me, he's doing that shooting 65% from the floor. Mm -hmm. You have to get the ball out of this guy's hands. And Ottawa's done a really good job tonight with that. Forte 0 for 3 from the floor to start tonight and a minus 7. Here is Junior Cadugan who's back in the game. 
He's sizing up Kyle Landry. Little stop, little pivot, can't get it to go from a few feet away, and it's going to go back the other yeah, you way. Know That's kind of tough because they got the switch that they wanted there. Um, Kadugan's man was on Forte. It was a little mismatch down low. Junior missed it and took a tough shot. But that's something you have to look for. If you get a switch like that, again, to get your offense going, you know that your bread and butter is getting into the post. That's the ideal situation. Thomas Scrub hits TJ Lall underneath for a bucket for Ottawa to make it 20-12. to 12. And it's back now in the hands of the Bandits. Capers is going to drive from the left wing. The foul is going to be called. He's going to go to the line to shoot two. They're going to say it happened as he was making the gather to go up four. An attempted lefty finish. I want to bring everybody an update from yesterday's game. We saw late in the excellent finish between the Hamilton Honey Badgers and Edmonton Stingers. Dwayne Notice went down, and it was reported today. Some unfortunate news. Dwayne Notice has torn his Achilles and will be out indefinitely. Obviously, thoughts with him. That's a tough injury, Javon. Oh, definitely. You know, I, I've seen it happen to a couple guys, but you know the thing with that. You never want to see happen in sports, and, and, and it's really unfortunate for a guy like that. And, and I, I had a chance to speak to him last night. He said he was in tears while he was at the hospital, hmm. um, especially because he was finally having fun playing basketball again. He was getting back his confidence, had a flow, and was really looking to finish off. You know, he's having an MVP season for Hamilton um, in the past two games. So it's unfortunate for him, but you know what? That guy's relentless, and I'm sure his recovery started today, just getting his mind right, in, in right into, into the right mind frame to get back in form. Absolutely. Brahana Mescal and Pierre Charles connect on a pick and roll, but Pierre Charles can't get it to go at the rim. Clausen with it. Little dump pass underneath to Capers, who will jam it down. 20 to 14, the Black Jacks lead here. 2.30 to play in the first quarter. And that's a play, Sean. I, I call it a 50-50 play. Those are the basketballs that you have to get a you have to get a hold on if you want to win a game, whether you're the offense or defense. Loose ball like that, 50-50 ball, you have to get control of it. And they call it a foul there on Shaquille Keith for just kind of swiping his arms. An offensive foul, and it's going to be back in the hands of Fraser Valley as they swap out the balls here. They'll go and sanitize that one amply, part of the protocols here. It's been a bit chippy tonight, hasn't it? It has. I mean, Fraser Valley, I'm not surprised the game with them would get chippy. Their game earlier this week against uh, Saskatchewan was uh, kind of the same way. They're a very, very intense team. Let's put yeah. it that way. And you know what? Being 0-2, you sort of have the feeling that teams are going to try and come in and, and you know push you around and take advantage of you. And I'm sure Ottawa they made a con has made a conscious effort, especially knowing that Fraser Valley's I identity is to be tough and greedy, that we're not going to get pushed over tonight. That's not that's not who we're going to be. Clausen tries to wrap a pass around Moon is Tutu. It's deflected out of bounds. Back in the hands of Fraser Valley. Seven on the clock. Inbounder to Kadugan. Kadugan pulls up from mid range. That's no good. Rebound grabbed by Shaquille Keith as he'll walk it up himself. Ottawa's doing a really good job with Junior Kadugan. They're going under the screens and forcing him to take t contested jump shots. Into the corner. Keith for three from the right corner. That's no good. A couple guys go for the ball there. It's going to be Bandit's ball as uh, it goes off the hands of Pierre Charles. 20-14, to 14, Ottawa leads. 146 to play in the first. Been a good start. Been a good pace to this game, you know. Fraser Valley's been, you know, they've been getting up and down. They've missed a couple of chippies, but Ottawa's done a good job of finding a balance between, you know, picking up the pace as well as getting into their half-court sets. Brahannes Michael's had a good, you know, had a really good start hitting a couple of threes, which has opened things up for them. Kadugan has it on the right wing. There's nine on the clock here for the Bandits. He takes a screen from Olu Ashalu, freshly checked in. Marcus Capers for three in the corner, and Shaquille Keith fouls him going up for a triple. Shaquille Keith staring down the ref as he walks away. And Marcus Capers is going to go to the line here to shoot three shots once again. This is the second three-point foul so far committed by the Blackjacks. That's one of the coach. I mean, we talked earlier this week about how offensive rebounding is a coach's worst nightmare. Is number two fouling a three-point shooter? You know what? When a case like this where it happens back-to-back -back in the same corner, same spot, <laughs> I think this would actually be, um, you know, Coach Dante's nightmare at this point. But, yes, offensive rebounds, giving, you know, giving your opponent a second-chance opportunities, as well as, you know, these are free, these are free throws. So, essentially, these are going to be three free shots for Capers. You want to avoid that. Javon, you play a lot of basketball. I'm sure you were very, very responsible defensively and a great rebounder, never never not boxing out. But what's the maddest you've ever made one of your coaches? Uh, you know what? I, I've, I've had a couple times where I was leaking <laughs> out to get some easy baskets. So. <laughs> Here's Olivier Hanlon. He'll walk it up after 
You know, I'd really like to see Hammond have a, have a breakout game tonight. He's a guy that can be, you know, very explosive offensively. Uh, and he can really be the catalyst of this team. He had a good third quarter in their last game against Edmonton. He finished with 15 points in that one. It was a loss, though. Brahana Mescal can't get it to go. Scramble for the ball. Tom Scrub picks it up. Hanlon for three from the left wing. That's no good. And it's a long rebound back in the hands of Scrub. He puts up a three. That's no good. Another long rebound. This time it's Marcus Capers who has it going the other way for Fraser Valley. He'll drive. Tries to size up Scrub. And an offensive foul called. The second charge that Scrub has drawn so far early here. And Capers is called for the foul. Ottawa ball as the mops come out to clean up the moisture off the floor. You know what, Scrub's not the player that's gonna wow you with the eye test because he looks slightly unorthodox. But if you're looking at a scouting report, if you're watching him over the course of a game, this guy's always in the right place. He'll get you rebounds, he'll get you offensive rebounds, get you opportunities for you know, more second, sorry, second chance points. And he's gonna make the right play. This guy, you know, he's essential on good teams. Olivier Halen driving on to Shalu, tries to pull up, he can't. Shalu's in his grill. Back to Brahana Mescal, little free throw line jump shot. That's no good. Fight for the rebound. Lal is in there, but it's going to end up being a Shalu who grabs it. And Kadugan pushes it the other way. The shot clock is off. Clausen for three. That's no good. Bit of a misreading of the clock there, it seems, as the Blackjacks will walk it back up now. Ten on the clock with Olivier Hanlon sizing up Junior Kadugan. You know Seven what? now on the clock. That's unlike Clausen. He shot. This is a guy that shot 40% from three last year. Hanlon can't get the three to go. Sorry, Javon. <laughs> wow. As we get to the end of the quarter, 20 to 17, the Ottawa Blackjacks lead after getting up 13-0 early on. The second quarter coming up here on CBC Gem and TSN 1200 in Ottawa. What is 100 years? In 1920, Earhart Cook turned a passion for headwear into the new era cap company in Buffalo, New York. But everyone was making this kind of hat. So we came up with the big idea to make the best caps for the biggest sport. But something wasn't quite right. We wanted to show the logos with pride. And just like that, the iconic 5950 was born, changing the baseball cap forever. For the first time, the caps the pros wore on the field were officially sold in stores. And then something unique happened. Spike Lee called the Spike Lee and asked to have a red Yankees cap to match his jacket. We asked Major League Baseball, and they said, we had a chance to be disruptive. Spike's red cap launched sports headwear into a wider culture. Hip hop made it a staple. Creators made it their own. Colors, fabrics, patterns. It was more than just your favorite team. And a gold sticker on the visor became as iconic as the cap itself. And those four numbers, we think it's an original production number. We don't know for sure, but we love them. From courtside to Crenshaw, from the 50 to 5th, it shouted that this is who you were, what you repped, and where you lived. The world saw it and wanted it. Where were we? Staying true to our roots. Fans of all sports became fans of us. People liked what we were doing, so our brand grew, and we became more than just a cat. That's 100 years. We thank you. Enjoy what comes next. Back inside Meridian Center 2017, the Fraser Valley Bandits lead. Amy Otterberg has something for us on the sidelines. Well, yeah, just a, a little bit in the time up before that. Listen, that quick shot by Merrick Clausen, Kyle Julius was clapping his hands, and I understand why. You've got a three-point shooter in transition with his feet set in the third quarter. He's got to let that one fly. So he was clapping his hands. That was a good shot. Merrick also brought up a great point in the timeout. He said, Ottawa is hard hedging, so look for the slips on offense. Guys. Thanks so much, Amy. Amy's doing a great job all tournament long. Mining the sidelines, getting those great nuggets from inside those scrums in between quarters and at timeouts. And checking into the game is Lloyd Pandy, who's at the line right now to shoot two free throws. Lloyd Pandy brought in to replace Phil Scrub, a Carleton University player. 
Not to mention a freshman at that. A freshman, a freshman at freshman, that. A freshman and getting in here and having an impact immediately. Good to see that. And again, we, we spoke early on about a lot of the youth sport guys that are, that are you know, have been playing in the league. You know, it's really refreshing to see that these guys are coming out and having an, an immediate impact. Clausen for three, that's no good. Pandy with the rebound. Pandy averaged 15 a game along with uh, six, nearly six boards and two assists for Carlton this season under head coach Taffy Charles out there. Close to my heart as a uh, Carlton grad myself. <laughs> Here's Tom Scrub, can't get it to go with the left hand. And the Bandits will push it back the other way. 23-17 here, Ottawa, early on. Ottawa's done a really good job coming out of the first quarter. I know, you know one of the keys to the game was you know, limiting Forte's touches. He's 0 for 4 right now, but you know, four tough shots. And, and as well, you know, they've, they've had some miscues. Guys have shrunk the floor on, on Ottawa, got some deflections, and really kept the ba basketball out of his hands and out of, a, out of comfortable positions. Oh, Jabs Newby tosses it up there for Tavarian Knicks on the run. It's an alley oop jam for Tavarian Knicks. 23 19. Ottawa leads here. His frame kind of reminds me of a guy that we should all be familiar with, Amir Johnson. That oh, yeah. Play. yeah. <laughs> when I see him go up there on the right side, it kind of had flashbacks. There's Brandon Meskel. Handy catches the loose ball. Scrub, lefty finish. That is good from about 10 feet out for Thomas Scrub. 25 19. Again, this game started off with a 14 0 run for the Ottawa Blackjacks, and Fraser Valley's outscored them. 19-11 since then. Foul's gonna be called here away from the ball. It's gonna be on Lloyd Pandy. A reminder that Coventry is the official transportation partner of the CEBL Summer Series, getting these athletes to and from the three safe zones that have been set up as part of the protocols here, from the hotel to the practice facility and here at Meridian Center. Big thanks to Coventry for all the work they're doing. 14 on the clock here for the Bandits as they'll have a baseline inbound after the foul. It'll be Kadugan inbounding. He's out there with a Shalu, Nix, Klassen. Klassen and Jabs Newby. Couldn't see Klassen there. He's behind ref Tony <laughs> Turnbull, so thanks for the eyes there. <laughs> Klassen's fouled by Olivier Hanlon. Bit of a stop and start beginning to the quarter here. It'll be a sideline out of bound, 14 back on the clock. Kadugan's a guy that really wants this game. Like he, he, you know, he stacked up against guys that play for the national team, and he, you know, he's a guy that says he hasn't got his, his just dues over the last couple of years. So he, you know, he was really animated a couple of nights ago with, my, <laughs> with me on the sideline here, and we had a conversation. He said he's going to go at everybody on this team and make sure he's going to make sure he gets a victory. Merrick Clausen drives as a lefty lay-in that goes. 25-21. Here's Brahana Miskell. A little pick and pop action. Landry for three from the right wing. That is good. Kyle Landry knocking it down. Brahana Miskell did a great job rejecting the screen there. But Landry's helps that Landry's defender helped on the screen. He kicked it back for a great shot. Ashalu with it. He'll drive to the corner. Newby for three. That's good. Jabs Newby knocking the triple down. And that's what you want. Inside, outside the basketball. You keep it simple. Limit the amount of dribbles. Move the basketball extremely fast. You know, the faster you move the ball, you create yourself an advantage. Defenders can't keep up with a, a move in basketball. Landry tries to go for a three, passes his way out of it. Pandy drives, kicks up to Hanlon for three. That is good, Olivier Hanlon, the triple. And the offense is doing some good work here now. But you know what? I'm going to credit that basket to Pandy. Again, you know, a nice, nice penetration from the baseline towards the middle of, of the court and a kick out. You know, good kick. That's a veteran play. Kick out to Hanlon for a three. Yeah, the OUA has got to be scared if first year Lloyd Pandy is doing this against pros <laughs> in his first stint against pros. There is Klaassen, triple is wide right, rebound grabbed, and there is Brahana Meskel walking it up. Tries to do an entry pass there to Pandy. That's no good, picked off split, by Klaassen. Split second too late. And Klaassen is uh, fouled there as Kyle Landry was looking to pick up the charge, and it'll be in the hands of the Bandits. 21 on the shot clock. 2-2's checking in here. Brahana Miskell will take a quick seat. Cam Forte back in. We mentioned Forte off the top. 0-4 from the field so far in this game. After scoring 28 and 30 points respectively in his first two outings in the CEBL. 
making his debut season here with the Bandits. And you know, he made a comment the other night that he's the MVP. He's the best player in this league. At 29 and 10 right now with, not to mention, three, leading the league with three and a half steals per game. He did set the CEBL record, or tie the CEBL record that is, with six steals in the last game as well against Saskatchewan. Here's Pandy for three. That is no good. The rebound is grabbed by Nix. It's tossed around, though, and it ends up falling in the hands of Kyle Landry on a dime from Tom Scrub. As Nix was trying to save it, passed it right to Scrub, gave it to Landry, and put it up for the bucket, 33-24. Scrub has been doing everything tonight. Defending the point guards, offensive rebounds, assists. He gets to take center stage as the only remaining scrub on this roster. He's feeling <laughs> it. Here's uh, Nix. That is blocked by Olivier Hanlon. Nice little block there coming out of nowhere for Hanlon to knock that away from the much larger Nix. And you know what? To go back on Forte, it's actually pretty impressive that a guy that's exerting so much offensively is still your, your, your leader. Um, in steals, that just goes to show the, the, his output defensively as well. I think he's really good playing passing lanes and, and getting deflections and getting to getting those steals. When you're a player like Forte and you're Kyle Julius, the coach, sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll get into this. There's five seconds left on the clock, so we'll get to <laughs> the right. Forte talk in a second. I Perfect. don't want to <laughs> look how you short, <laughs> right. uh, but they're just about to inbound five on the clock here as Kadugan will inbound. He gets it into Forte there in the middle. Spin move. Tries to pass it out to Newby, and that's no good. And Hanlon goes the other way. He gets it to go off glass, now an 11-point lead. To my point there, as you saw Forte see a couple bodies there and throw it away with a turnover, when you're a guy like Forte, who's you know, such a big part of your offense, how do you get a guy like that going when the team is sending so much towards him defensively? You know what? He has to let the game come to him. And you can't force the issue as well because Ottawa's done a really good job scouting. If you can see, not only are they sending a double team, but they're forcing they're forcing Forte away from his left hand and his strong hand. So you, have to, you just have to let the game come to him. And as well, you can use that as attention. Draw the attention, find the open guys, and kick it out to them. Here's Pandy. He'll drive. Looking for an option. He finds Scrub in the mid-range. He's got Forte on him. He'll pull back for three. That is well off and in the hands of Capers. Forte tries to get to the outlet pass, but it's a little over his head. And it's going to go back to the Blackjacks. 35-24 is the score here. The Blackjack le Blackjacks lead as we hit the media timeout here on CBC Gem and TSN 1200 in Ottawa. Well, when I was younger in high school, I was a pretty good athlete. Went to the provincial championships in most sports like volleyball, track, basketball, and of course, the goalie. But lately, I've been going up the stairs like Fred Sanford. That's why I use Inflamex. Remember, two M's, two X's. Inflamex is formulated to relieve joint pain, helps address pain and inflammation at the cellular level, and is GMO-free and allergen-free. I'm doing better with a little help from my friends at Bell Lifestyle Products. So you can do the things that you do best. Oh, yeah! Spend two nights in Ottawa and get $100 spending money on us. Dinner and drinks, it's on us. Or culture and sightseeing, it's on us. So relax, it's on us. Spend two nights and get $100. A mark of legacy, a mark of our game. Spalding is the official basketball partner of the CEBL. Get your replica CEBL game ball now at CEBL.ca and take our game to your courts. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. Welcome back inside Meridian Center. Sean Woodley, Javon Shepard, and Amy Otterberg here with you. 4.31 to play in the second quarter as the Ottawa Blackjacks lead the Fraser Valley Bandits 35-24. And Munis Tutu of the Blackjacks walks it up here to get the offense going for Ottawa. Into the corner for Olivier Hanlon. He finds Jean Emmanuel Pierre Charles on the baseline. Back up to Hanlon. Over to the left wing for Tutu for three. That is well short. And it's going to be Fraser Valley ball as it sails out of bounds. And we'll get a fresh 24 for Fraser Valley to work with. Kyle Julius came out of there with a switch in the defense. I seen a little 2-3 
um, two three action, two three zone by Fraser Valley. Pretty very rare for them. Pretty rare for them as a team that likes to you know really apply pressure. Junior Cadugan drives and finishes with the right hand as it swirls around the bucket. 35-26. A reminder in the fourth quarter with four minutes left, we'll hit the Elam ending, which is in play for all CEBL games here in the summer series. Munis 2-2 drives. He is fouled going up, and he is going to go to the line. Fouled there by Cam Forte. You see maybe some frustration on the part of Cam Forte, who's had a tough go here after scoring 30 points in the last time out. Yeah, that, that's a tough foul, but I, you know, on the defense has to be able to see that, and weak side has to create, come over, slide over into the help side to avoid that open lane to the basket. Um, Tutu did a good job with the one dribble blowing by Jimmy Kadugan on, on the, what is it, the left perimeter, the right, right wing here. Moon is Tutu, of course, a member of the champion Carlton Ravens this past season. They do that a lot, don't they, Javon? <laughs> <laughs> here is Jahens Manigat for the Bandits. Tutu was one of two at the line, so it's 36-26. Junior Kadugan in the corner, in the left. He gets it down to Forte. He's got Pierre Charles on him. He'll try to put up a lefty shot, and he gets that to go. Finally, Cam Forte is on the board, his first bucket of the game, with just over three minutes left in the second quarter. Not sure we, we could have expected that coming in. All right, and that's what you want to stop very early. That's a... You know, that one basket can really change, you know, give you some confidence, give him a feel, just seeing it go in the basket. Here's Olivier Hanlon on the right wing, takes a screen from TJ Law, pulls up for three, that's no good. Offensive board grabbed by Law, finds Pierre Charles underneath. He gets up there for the finish underneath, and he's fouled and is going to go to the line for a three-point play opportunity. And that's, that's a tough thing when you're in the zone is that you're always out of position for rebounds. So guys have to make more of a conscious effort to turn when a shot goes up, turn and find a man and just get, your, get a hand on it. Thomas Scrub is checking in here for TJ Law. Kyle Landry will check in after Pierre Charles takes this free throw if he hits it. Lloyd Pandy checking in as Munis Tutu will sit down. And then for the Bandits right now, it's to Vivier, Manigat, Capers, Forte and Kadugan. Less than three minutes to go here in the quarter. Free throw is made by Pierre Charles. He'll take a seat. 39-28 is the score in favor of the Blackjacks. Kadugan will lock it up. He's got scrub on him as he crosses half court. 18 on the clock. He'll take a screen from Forte. Ottawa, does a, Ottawa has a really good team defensively. Interchangeable guys on the perimeter. They've done a good job tonight of, of pick and roll, just switching. And, and, you know, the next defender up has done a really good job of moving his feet, whether the, whether it's a big, a perimeter, a, a wing. All interchangeable, all defensive, all defend quite well. Foul is called there. It's going to stay with the Bandits. A reminder to support your local team and get the latest news, videos, and highlights through Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Follow Ottawa at Ott, O-T-T underscore Blackjacks and Fraser Valley at F-V underscore Bandits on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Marcus Capers has it. He gets it over to Kadugan. Nine on the clock. Back up to Capers up high. He'll drive to the left wing. Manigat for three. That is good, Jahens Manigat knocking it down. Here is Olivier Hanlon, he'll walk it up for Ottawa. Eight point game here, just over two minutes to play in the second quarter. Pandy drives off glass, that's good, Lloyd Pandy. This kid is fearless, he's absolutely fearless. This is a, this is a freshman in university. I don't even want to know what I was doing in the summer after my freshman year of school. <laughs> Probably nothing good. Certainly not playing pro basketball against seasoned vets. And one of those is Kyle Landry, who blocks Kadugan. And it's at the other way here for Ottawa. Brahanna Miskell has it with Duvivier guarding him in the backcourt. They've done a really good job contesting Junior Kadugan's attempts at the basket tonight. It's been tough. You guys have really locked into their scouting report. Rahanna Miskell can't knock down the three. Forte has it going the other way on the run. Can't get that to go. And now it's a bit of a track meet as Thomas Scrub opens up. There's Rahanna Miskell as the trailer for three. That's good, Johnny Rahanna Miskell. That's twice now Forte's been on a transition, and they pretty much forced him to use his right hand. Um, it's, been <laughs> it's worked out for them. Twice he's missed two chippies. Marcus Capers over to DeVivier on the left wing. He's got Brahanna Mescalano. 
He probes, seven on the clock. There's Forte underneath, the smaller Brahana Mescal guarding him on a switch, and Forte connects with the left hand, that golden left hand of his, now is up to four points on the game. And if you're Frazier Valley, that's what you want. You want him to get some easy touches because he's the bulk of your half-court offense. He sees it goes in, feels it going in, you know, you're in for a good night. Brahana Mescal for three, once again, can't get that to fall. Capers the other way, 11 second difference, shot clock, game clock, Manigat for three. That is good. Manigat with his third triple so far tonight. I think this is what Coach Kyle Julius was talking about, the money spots for Manigat, because he's hit a couple of threes from the exact same corner um, tonight. Only one second difference, shot clock, game clock here, 14 on the shot clock for Kyle Landry under the basket, goes up, is fouled, and one opportunity for Kyle Landry. Kyle Landry's been around, eh, Javon? He's, uh, he's a long time uh, guy on the circuit in Canadian basketball. He's been around the circuit. We've actually been teammates for some years. Really good guy. Um, interestingly enough, he was in retirement for some, you know, I think it was two years now. You know, started to play the three on three, um, Olympic three on three, got back into it, and, and now he's considering going back over to play professionally. So it's really good to see him still out there and, and effective. Marcus Capers can't get that to go. And we get to the end of the quarter here with the score 46-36 in favor of the Ottawa Blackjacks. Off to a good start. They got the 14-0 run in the first quarter. They've hung on to about a double-digit lead the entire game so far as we bring ourselves to the end of the first half. And again, Ottawa looking for their very first win of the season. It's a big one. <laughs> if, if they can pick this if up, pick this get up. themselves on the board. If they fall to 0-3, things become pretty troublesome. But looking good so far here for the Ottawa Blackjacks as we get geared up for the halftime show. Stick around. We got lots for you in the intermission as we are going to have Amy Audibert checking in with Johnny Brahana Meskel, the leading scorer so far here for the Ottawa Blackjacks. Let's send it down to Amy. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Johnny, your highest scoring game of the summer series, and it's only halftime right now. What's been working so well for you on the court? Uh, I think we're just we're defending. We're able to get out and get some looks on the other end, and guys are just creating for each other. And you know, I think we just hit a couple more shots than we have in the past games, but it's only been one half, so we know that they uh, in the past two, in the first two games, I think they're kind of the team that's kind of figured it out early. So we got to expect them to come out hard in the second half. Really humble about your team, but I want to talk to you about you because yeah. you look more comfortable out, out there than we've seen yet. So so was there a difference or is it just the flow and the way you're feeling right yeah, now? Yeah, just the flow and understanding that, you know, uh, we're, we've lost two games and we all kind of got to take some responsibility for it and I'm trying to do that. But, I mean, in the second half, we have a bunch of guys that can score the ball. And for me, it was me in the first half to start the game with some energy, but I think the guys are feeding off it. Lloyd came in and just played with a lot of energy. And I think uh, we have a lot of basketball left for us the week. All right, well, we appreciate your time. Okay, good luck in the second half. Thank you. We'll go back to you guys. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not studying now, my own soul. But those real ones, they coming now. Oh look, who's reaching now? Old friends wanna feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh, you reaching now from the west side of that old town. But there's no show, so I go down to the open mic. Show love to the real ones they know now. Some of y'all don't know now. In a couple months, you're gonna find out. Been blowing up from the underground, and they stepping on a landmine now, and he knows my time now, coming up, I'm on a climb now, everybody claim they've been bottom, but it's looking like they took a time out, okay, Ooh. I'm working on a Wednesday, then up again the next day, so and so is popping, man, I skip him like he leg day, kick it like I'm Pele, I never care what they say, put myself on Spotify, so every day my payday, that realness, don't feel this, but I've been sick, that illness, I've been fresh like Will Smith, since 94, man, I built this, stressed out, x out, missed calls from my ex now, but I'm staying focused in the lab, baby, I don't need your cause or your text now God say the boy blessed now Who am I to say Rondo? And the way that I sell ticks, they have been calling me Rondo 23 in my prondo Been a bar like Lonzo Go and tell everybody talking stage Better be in that convo, uh It was a Saturday Chris was a good dad His water practices, not so much Hey Chris Hey Culligan Got a water pitcher for the fam 
pretty safe, huh? Uh, well, basic water pitchers are passable, whereas a collagen reverse osmosis system can reduce lead, arsenic, pesticide runoff. You realize these have filters? Chris, pour it out. It's not going fast enough. Just, just done with that. When your water's right, so is your world. I wrote that. Halftime here as the Ottawa Blackjacks lead the Fraser Valley Bandits 46-36 through 20 minutes of action. Second half on the way, but first we've got the halftime show for you, so stick around. we got a recap of yesterday's excellent game between the Edmonton Stingers and the uh, Hamilton Honey Badgers, that is. We've also got Amy Otterbird's sit-down interview with Commissioner Mike Morreale. Our keys to the game refreshed with Javon Shepard as well as the halftime stats presented by Bet Chris. All that and more coming up as we... Uh, head into the halftime show here on cbcsports.ca, CBC Gem, and on TSN 1200 in Ottawa. Welcome to PayWorks. We're payroll, HR, and time and absence management experts. So whether your business has thousands of employees or just one, let us show you how we're different. We're PayWorks, and we're doing business to business, person to person. A mark of legacy, a mark of our game. Spalding is the official basketball partner of the CEBL. Get your replica CEBL game ball now at cebl.ca and take our game to your courts. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. It's time to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. Jacks fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit theblackjacks.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. Bandits fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit thebandits.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. But I expect big things from me, especially in a game like tonight. They definitely have this game marked on their calendar. Averaged 18 points a game last year, did Daniels as he wins the tip back. I think the goal, goal for them is to actually slow down early on and just get guys a feeling, get guys some touches, and get guys involved in the game. Nice little lob there by Notice to Makama. Here's Kareem South. Takes the screen from Daniels, pulls up from three. That's good, Kareem South knocking it down. Again, with a short window, 15 days to win this championship. You want a guy like that to be at his peak. <laughs> Well, the win is on the line here for Xavier Moon, the MVP of the league last year, has the ball in his hands. He pulls up for three for the win. It's good, Xavier Moon <laughs> takes the Edmonton Stingers and it's more relief than it is happiness from Xavier Moon as Edmonton made that probably a lot closer than they would have wanted to. But it's a win here for the Edmonton Stingers to move to two and one here in the CEBL Summer Series. Let's build on what we did yesterday and let's have a good one. One, two, three. Hey, we're about to turn up one time on these boys. They're not ready. ready, ready. Hey, Tyler, get out of here. Make it count. Don't take no hit of your own. Oh, yeah. Listen, man. Tonight is the night. Family on three, one, two, three. Family, together. One, two, three, stay here. Four, five, six. Family. We got an opportunity to play basketball. Let's take advantage of it.
What is 100 years? In 1920, Earhart Cook turned a passion for headwear into the new era cap company in Buffalo, New York. But everyone was making this kind of hat. So we came up with the big idea to make the best caps for the biggest sport. But something wasn't quite right. We wanted to show the logos with pride. And just like that, the iconic 5950 was born, changing the baseball cap forever. For the first time, the caps the pros wore on the field were officially sold in stores. And then something unique happened. Spike Lee called, the Spike Lee, and asked to have a red Yankees cap to match his jacket. We asked Major League Baseball, and they said, we had a chance to be disruptive. Spike's red cap launched sports headwear into a wider culture. Hip hop made it a staple. Creators made it their own. Colors, fabrics, patterns. It was more than just your favorite team. And a gold sticker on the visor became as iconic as the cap itself. And those four numbers, we think it's an original production number. We don't know for sure, but we love them. From courtside to Crenshaw, from the 50 to 5th, it shouted that this is who you were, what you repped, and where you lived. The world saw it and wanted it. Where were we? Staying true to our roots. Fans of all sports became fans of us. People liked what we were doing, so our brand grew, and we became more than just a cap. That's 100 years. We thank you. Enjoy what comes next. book about this one day this is uh this has been special it's been it's a lot of fun but it's certainly an emotional time to go through basically a 10-week window between the delay of the cbl 2020 season and now the summer series right. can you kind of summarize what that time frame has looked like for you it was it was completely hectic i think the first couple of weeks was just trying to figure out what's going on and what we did was we we said, listen, there's never going to be another time we're going to get that. We're going to have this time at home just to concentrate on what's next. And uh, the credit to my staff, I, I kind of put it on them and said, we're, we're going to find a way out of this. You've created an atmosphere where the players can come to play, the coaches can come to coach, the broadcasters were broadcasting. We feel safe. Mm -hmm. uh, what types of creative things have, have you and your team done to enable that for us? Well, you know, first of all, whenever you do anything related to health and safety, you've got to go to experts. And we were great to or quick to assemble a, a really good medical staff around us, uh, Dr. Lone and Dr. Terigian. Then we engage with Niagara Health, and they have been just tremendous. Dr. Hirji, the chief medical officer, and his team has been phenomenal in terms of, of evaluating evaluating our protocols, um, you know, making suggestions here and there, and then really, once we got into it, basically taking over the situation to make sure we were, we were doing it safely. And, and that's been, at times, stressful, but exactly how we anticipated and planned for it to go. So, and then you add into it the layers of, of masks and social distancing and hand washing and ball sanitation and cleaning the floors and cleaning the backboards. And it's a consistent approach of reminding people that the end goal comes from everything we do prior, and that means staying safe. Welcome back inside Meridian Center for the second half here between the Ottawa Blackjacks and the Fraser Valley Bandits. Ottawa looking to get their first win of the CEBL Summer Series while Fraser Valley looking to go to 3-0. And, oh. and right now the Blackjacks lead 46-36 to kick things off. Right now the leading scorer for Ottawa is Johnny Berhanna Mescal, who's 4 of 8 from downtown, has 12 points to lead the way. Jahens Manigat leading the way for Fraser Valley with 12 points. Their usual leading scorer, Cameron Forte, just four points on two of eight shooting as the Blackjacks have done an excellent job of slowing down Cameron Forte. We're going to head on down in just a second here to Amy Otterberg, who's going to chat with head coach Osvaldo Genti of the Ottawa Blackjacks. Amy, let's send it on down. 
Yeah, thanks, Sean. Coach, that was your highest offensive output in the tournament in a half, and Fraser Valley's lowest. What are your biggest points of execution that are working so well? We're just getting stops. So once we get stops and we get, get out running, then we can make a lot of easier, easier baskets. The guys are shooting it and being aggressive. Lloyd Pandy, you certainly throw him into the fire. What, are, what is he showing you early in this game? Well, Lloyd just keeps things simple. Uh, he knows what he's good at, and he's a good defender as well, so he's, he allows us to, to switch a lot of different actions. So he, he's been a good help for us. Real quick, single most important thing to seal this game off for you guys. We just uh, have to keep matching your energy. We know they've been down 15 before, and then they usually pick, pick it up and bring even more energy in, in, in the second half against uh, Saskatchewan. So we have to make sure that we keep on matching your energy and we do the things that's been getting us there. All right, we appreciate your time. Good luck in the second half. All right, thank Go you. Back to you guys. Thanks, Amy, and thanks to Coach Jensi for taking the time. Javon Shepard here with me on the, on the desk. Let's dive into your keys to the game and how these teams are holding up with those through one half of action. Let's begin with Ottawa. You know what, the key for Ottawa was to take care of the basketball. They've had four turnovers in, in the first half. They've executed that, you know, and that's, that's bode well for them. Limit touches for Forte. Forte's had eight shots, but at the same time, they've been eight difficult, eight tough shots. Every time he's had a look or every time they've made, you know, a gesture to pass to him, they've crowded him. So they've done a really good job with that. And know your individual scouting report. We've seen that. The guys have, they've played guys that want to penetrate, you know, met them at the basket, a guy like Junior Kuhn, you know, he, he wants to penetrate. They've met him at the basket, ended up blocking him a couple of times, and guys that want to shoot, you've ran them off the three-point line. Also to note on Forte, uh, just, uh, sorry, no assists and two turnovers for him so far through the first half as well. Let's take a look at the keys to the game for the Fraser Valley Bandits and how they're doing. They wanted to guard for 40 minutes. That's been the identity of their team. 46 points for, for Ottawa in the first half. That's a bit too much on 57.9% from the floor. That's a bit too much. We need to get that down, or they need to get that down, rather, to something more reasonable. Play Fraser ba Valley basketball. I think they've gotten away from that. They haven't been the aggressor tonight, and that's been, you know, that's been a tough spot for them. Don't relax. They got off to an 11-0, well, Ottawa rather, rather got off to an 11-0 start. That's not Fraser Valley basketball, and they definitely, you know, they came into this game a bit too relaxed, I think, with an 11-0 start for Ottawa. They've gotten away from what they do. Let's take a look at the halftime stats presented by Bet Chris. The rebounding battle slightly in favor of the Blackjacks. Assists pretty even across the board. The Blackjacks swatting five shots away from the Bandits to just one that the Bandits have stonewalled at the other end. And steals pretty even. Field goal percentage 44% to 38 there as well as the Blackjacks have the edge there. Just a few seconds away here. If you're Cam Forte, let's go back to him because obviously he's been the star of this tournament so far in his post-game interview on Tuesday night. When as far as to say he's the best player in the league if you're the best player in the league clearly you're going to have a response after going two of eight for just four points in the first half correct you're right you're right you definitely will but at the same time you know being the best player performing the way you've had teams are now targeting teams, teams have now had the opportunity to scout they know what you do so you know too much who too much who's granted He's going to have to expect this. Absolutely. And then Ottawa, as you see some of the highlights from Ottawa in the first half there, you know, they're playing their first game without Philip Scrub, of course. He's uh, got contract obligations with his new team over in France, so he's no longer on the roster. How have they adapted to life without Phil Scrub here? You know what? Sometimes less is more. And some guys have stepped up tonight, really, in, in, in his absence. So I think, you know, it forces everybody to step up their level of play. And you even see, you know, the rookie that's, that's got out here and really got after it. So I think, you know, they don't really miss him in a sense. Maybe over the stretch of this of this season here, they may they may need his services. But for tonight, uh, it's definitely forced guys to step up and perform. Absolutely. We kick off the second half here on CBC Gem and TSN 1200 in Ottawa. Thanks for being with us. As Cam Forte on the pick and roll gets to go on the assist from Jahens Manigat. That's the start Cam Forte is looking for. Great Maybe job. that pick and roll is kind of a way to do it as opposed to post ups, right. right? Right. You know what? Manigat did a good job getting into the into the defense in the heart of the defense drawing his defender, dropping it off, and got, got Forte a really easy basket. Underneath now is Shaquille Keith. He steps on the baseline. It's going to go back in the hands of Fraser Valley, who trail 46-38. A reminder, the Elam ending kicks in. Four minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, and they'll set a target score that both teams end up playing to nine more than the leading team scorer at the time. Ottawa's, sorry, go ahead. Ottawa's done a good job with Phil Scrub picking up full court. They're kind of they're giving Fraser Valley a taste of their own medicine. There's Manigat for three from deep. He had three triples in the first half. Can't get that one to fall, though. On the run, here is 
Kyle Landry getting the pass on as the trailer from Hanlon, and he finishes in the lane. And then a steal from Thomas Scrub, and he gets fouled. He's going to go to the line and shoot one for a three-point play opportunity. Thomas Scrub is a silent assassin. He hasn't his just his facial expression hasn't changed at all tonight, <laughs> and he's pretty much killing them on on both ends. Thomas Scrub. The lone scrub remaining on the roster. This guy, he's a guy that does a lot of things that don't show up in the stat sheet, which is, you know, it helps his teammates play at an efficient level. He's very unselfish. A guy like that, you, you have to have on your team. First half, he had nine points to go with six boards, three assists, four of seven from the field. Up to 12 points in the game now, tying Brahana Miskell for the team lead with 12. Here is Marcus Capers walking it up here for the Bandits. He gives it to Manigat. Manigat in the backcourt. He's got Hanlon on him. Kadugan over on the wing. Denies a screen from Forte. Now probing in the lane. Over to the wing. There is Manigat for three. He can't get that to fall. Hanlon goes the other way. He finds Keith down on the baseline in the right corner. Back up to Hanlon. Swung around. Thomas Scrub for three. That's no good. Tapped around. Gumps to the hands of Kadugan. The other way for Fraser Valley. You know, Here's Manigat. Tough shot for tough shot for for Tommy Scrub, but I, I think that play kind of was broken apart when Shaq Keith held on to the basketball. You don't necessarily want to stop the plays, keep the ball moving, or just catch it on the fly and play off play off the catch. Ball kicked out of bounds there as Ottawa will keep it, and they lead by 13 right now as the subs coming in. Uh, the subs too late there. J. Pierre Charles was trying to come in, but too late. And Ottawa will walk it up here as Olivier Hanlon has it, calls out the plays. He crosses half court with Kadugan on him. Fraser Valley's back in that 2 3 zone, so we'll see how, how Ottawa attacks this. Oh, uh, they attack it beautifully, very quick passing, and it's swung from Landry in the post to Scrub cutting down the lane, and Scrub finishes. Beautiful little set there for great, Ottawa. Great high low action. We've you, reached can, you can tell these guys, are, these guys are vets. As soon as Landry got it, you know, he looked over his left shoulder. Boom. We've reached the media timeout here on CBC Gem and TSN 1200. Put more on the other side. The CEBL is more than just basketball. It's about community, art, music, stories, food, and so much more. It's a professional basketball experience like no other, a lifestyle like no other, and it's time to bring it all together. Welcome to the CEBL Life, a forum where artists, musicians, videographers, community workers, writers, chefs, and innovative minds unite for one purpose, to showcase their talents and connect with a sport we all love, basketball. Head over to CEBL.ca to learn more. Ottawa Blackjacks on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the CEBL's newest club has to offer. Follow the Fraser Valley Bandits on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the Bandits have to offer. Fifty-three, thirty-eight. The Ottawa Blackjacks lead the Fraser Valley Bandits as there's just just over two minutes off the clock here in the third quarter. Jahens Manigat walking it up here for the Fraser Valley Bandits gets it in to Forte. This is tough, you know. We spoke about not letting up for Fraser Valley. It was 11-0 start to start the game and it come out 7-2 start for Ottawa in the second half here. Forte scores with the left hand there. Up to eight points in the game is Forte. Finding his groove a little bit, and he gets the steal there, and he's going to quickly hit double digits with the transition jam. That's your steals leader. He called that play a mile away, sitting sitting in there waiting for it. For Hannah Mescal now on the right side for Ottawa. He'll drive. Beautiful little crossover dribble there. Can't get it to go off glass, though, and it's the other way for Fraser Valley. 
Forte now in the lane, looking for a third straight bucket. That is blocked by Scrub, and it's now Hanlon with it. I know Bernard Mesco missed that transition layup, but I'm not sure if you noticed, that was a right foot, right hand attempt. That, he's really skilled. He sure is. Uh, under the basket there, Shaquille Keith is fouled. Keith is gonna go to the line, Kadugan is charged with the foul. Bell Lifestyle Products is, brought to, is proud to provide natural health products for elite athletes of the CEBL, retired athletes, and weekend warriors alike. Never stop doing your thing. Men's health empowered by nature. Bell Lifestyle Products. Keith at the line here for two. Knocks in the first. Also a heads up that Kotak Law, the official law firm of the CEBL Summer Series, knows these times have been hard for many Canadians. That's why they are donating $7,000 to the Canadian Mental Health Association and invite CEBL fans to join them. Visit cmha.ca today and join Anish Kotak in supporting the mental health of Canadians from coast to coast. The Bandits have the ball here after a couple made free throws by Keith in the corner. Marcus Capers, that's no good. Keith will take it the other way. Ottawa did a good job there. They switched up their defense, sort of 1-2-2 two, two there. But I think it was just to get guys a little breather. Keith over to Hanlon. Hanlon's got it. Seven on the clock. He looks up. Turns around near the free throw line. Is short. A rebound and scramble for it. They're not going to call a shot clock violation there. They're going to say possession changed hands. I know Kyle, Kyle Julius has to be living. That's tough for his team, tough break for his team. And Ottawa now has it again after an offensive rebound off the missed three by Keith. Brahana Mesco, four on the clock. Little crossover, mid-range jumper. That's good, sticks it. Johnny Brahana Mesco taking advantage of a bit of a fortuitous circumstance there <laughs> for Ottawa as Capers has it now in the backcourt for the Bandits. Here is Jabs Newby, drives. He's fouled there by Brahana Meskel going up, and Newby's going to go to the line for two. You know what? This is going to be a really good test for Fraser Valley, and, and it's better to happen early. You need some adversity. Things were going a, a little too smooth for them in the, in the early, you know, first couple of games. But you know, going out, this is definitely a team. It's never too late. You can't count them out. But at the same time, this is going to build a lot of character. You're, you know, just having to battle through this game. Yeah, Fraser Valley's been largely untouched so far in the summer series. Big blowout win in their first game. And then here they've kind of struggled to gain any traction. They led pretty much wire to wire as well against Saskatchewan earlier this week too. But you know what, you have to imagine, well, a lot of teams in this, in this series are gonna be up and down. You have to factor in, it is a short window, seven days of training camp, 15 days of, of, of season condensed, in, yeah, full season condensed into 15 days. There is gonna be the factor of fatigue that, that you know is gonna set in as well. So. These guys and the, the tempo at which these guys play the up and up and down press, you have to imagine that at some point they are going to get a little fatigued. Brianna Meskel's fouled there by Manigat in the back corner. It'll be a side out of bounds near the hash mark. 19 on the shot clock here for Ottawa, who lead 57 44, 531 left to play here in the quarter. Mutis Tutu has recently checked in. He has the ball, he's driving, tries to finish with his right, can't get it to go. Scramble for the ball. Pandy was in there, but it comes to Jabs Newby. And now on the run are the Bandits. Over to Clausen. He drives on the right wing. A little dump off pass. Tries to find Capers. It's off a Blackjack's player. It's going to stay with Fraser Valley. See Coach Osvaldo Genti yelled out at his team to control their transition defense a little bit. Get back. Here's Ashalu into the game for Fraser Valley. Klassen with it, drives, kicks it, and then it goes right to the hands of Pandy. Back the other way for Ottawa. They got numbers in the corner. Bahana Meskel for three. No good. Pandy on the offensive glass, though. Back to Bahana Meskel. Pandy's contribution tonight has been invaluable. You can't put a price on what he's doing. Offensive rebounds, tough plays. Getting to the ball to where it needs to be right assist. And again, I have to mention, this is a university freshman. I can't imagine what he's gonna be after four or five years of 
of not only playing in university, but you know, getting this experience to play against pros uh, during his summer months. Absolutely, taken as a U Sports guy, the CEBL draft by the Black Jacks. A turnover there, an offensive foul, I believe, on Jabs Newby after a missed three by Munis Tutu. 57-44, still the score here. It's Ottawa ball. Tutu will walk it up. I think if this was the NBA, um, Pandy would have ex the guy's contract extended tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Pandy with it. He surveys. He finds Rahana Mescal. And he's called for the charge. Newby getting in the way there after the offensive foul on the other end. He gets in the way. That's a great job. Charge. Great job from Newby coming off the weak side to take the charge. Still stuck at 57-44 here. And Manigat back to DeVivier. He'll walk it up here for the Bandits. Really impressed what Ottawa's done defensively. They forced they forced Fraser Valley to get the basketball out of their point guard's hands and force other guys, the perimeter guys, to make the you know make the plays come half or bring the ball up and make the plays in the half court. Merrick Clausen hits a three over Kyle Landry on a switch there. And that is a big triple, now just a 10 point game. Pandy with it, surveying once again on the elbow. Trying to find an outlet, 2-2 in the corner. Tries to find Scrub with a post up. The pass is a little bit errant and it goes off the fingertips of Scrub. Manigat's happy about that, he disrupted that entry pass and it's gonna be Fraser Valley ball. A reminder, the 2021 CEBL season ticket drive started yesterday and will run throughout the entire CEBL summer series. Visit theblackjacks.ca or thebandits.ca to place your $50 deposit and secure your 2021 season tickets and receive a 12% discount. Manigat with it. Over to Clausen on the right wing. He finds a Shalu in the post. He's got Landry on him. He tries to go baseline. A little bit up and under. That's good. Olu Ashalo gets it to go. That's a big body, tough, tough and physical. Good job you know, to Olu. What a screen. And they're going to call a, a foul on Landry for an enormous backcourt screen. Now that can go, that can go both ways. Fraser Valley needs to call that out for Noob. I think that was Noob that got, that got hit with that screen. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of those. That can, that can be dangerous. Your teammates need to call that out for you. Coach Oz Genty is not happy about the call. He gets a warning from referee Vern Bavell. Fraser Valley still within striking distance. Sure are. There's only eight points back here as DeVivier has it. Takes the screen from Ashalu. About gets nine Gets it back minutes. to Manigat for three. That is good. Jahens Manigat. About nine minutes in regulation play before we hit the... Infamous Elam. Yeah, nine minutes of regulation. We've got a timeout called here by the Ottawa Blackjacks. Devon, is that just a five-point game all of a sudden here after that made three by Manigat? Ottawa seems to be kind of losing it here a little bit. Obviously upset about a couple calls here, but how do you get it back on track if you're Coach Genty? You know, I, I think they've slightly gotten away from what was working for them. And they get guys look a bit tired, so I think, you know, some couple, a couple quicker rotations will get guys and get fresh guys and just applying the pressure that they were early on. Um, Fraser Valley's done a good job of flowing without Forte right now. So, you know, the focus isn't necessarily on you know, uh, defending Forte and making sure he doesn't get the ball, but now you have to make sure guard the perimeter. So, you know, now guys are getting threes, open threes. They're penetrating, they're getting on the run. Let's slow down. Slow down offensively and pick up the pressure defensively what was working for us earlier on tonight. Jahens Manigat has knocked down four threes now in this game. If you're Ottawa, what do you do to sort of, you know, you have this, this plan to stop Cameron Forte. How do you now readjust mid-game as a guy gets hot? It's tough because you, you, you know, created a scouting report. You've done your whole game plan surrounding, um, focusing on stopping Forte. And then now you have Manigat that's really, you know, really being having an impact in this game. So I guess it's just a shift in, in guys that are, you know, get a guy like Tommy Scrub on him that can mm -hmm. provide some length. Uh, contest his shots, but you do have to focus on, on, on stopping that right now. Munis Tutu walks it up here for the Blackjacks, looking to get back on track here, up just five. Pandy with it, little spin move in the paint. He double dribbles, almost got away with it, it seemed. And yeah. Until the Fraser Valley Bandits <laughs> uh, bench yelled that out. 
Call the double dribble, and it's back in the hands of Fraser Valley. Manigat, Duvivier, Klassen, Newby, and Ashalu on the floor here for the Bandits. Pandy, Tutu, Hanlon, Landry, and Scrub for the Ottawa Blackjacks, 57-52. As Duvivier drives off glass, can't get that to fall. And a loose ball foul is going to be called here on Olu Ashalu. So now they're evening out the, the anger on each bench here with the, with the most recent calls here. But you, you know what, to Fraser Valley's credit, you know, they have depth with their team. So when a guy like Cameron Forte is having an off night, other guys can step up. And they, ha they have, you know, a plethora of guys that can step up by any point, any night, and, you know, give you 10, 15, 20 points. So, you know, th it's the way Coach Kyle Julius constructed his team. And a lot of these teams here, a lot of these teams in this summer series are constructed the same way where they have, you know, they have a lot of depth to this team, to their teams. The Bandits are over the limits, so the Blackjacks are now shooting in the bonus as Landry misses the first there. For Hannah Meskel about to check back in here for Ottawa. For Hannah Mesco leads all scorers on the Blackjacks with 14 points. Thomas Scrub close behind him with 12. Manigat leads all scorers in the game with 15. Four of seven from downtown is Jahans Manigat who has it now. He walks it up. 2.40 on the clock, 16 on the shot clock. Ashalu down low again tries to drive baseline. Can't get that to go on the first attempt. Gets his miss up and under and plops it in. Olu Ashalu just bullying his way underneath the basket. <laughs> he dipped his shoulder twice into Kyle Landry's chest and you could hear it from here. You heard him oof, knock the wind out of him. For Hannah Meskel. He's got Klassen on him. Over to Hanlon. Sorry, Pandy. Scrub. In the paint. Turnaround jumper. Off glass, no good. Pandy with the offensive board again, making another big play there. Although Landry can't connect, Pandy once again gets in there, and Lloyd Pandy's going to go to the line after a couple of offensive rebounds. Again, a first-year university player for Carlton, thrown into emergency duty with Phil Scrub having to go overseas, and has played incredibly well so far. And he was ready. He was ready for his opportunity. He was definitely ready for his opportunity. Fraser Valley's done a good job as well of adjusting to Thomas Scrub. He's, an, he's another guy that likes to get to his left hand. And they've, they've sort of shut that down the second half. Played his left hand, forcing him to get to his right. It's a shame Lloyd Pandy's not going to get a chance to bring this back to U Sports right away, is of course <laughs> due to the pandemic. U yeah. Sports basketball canceled for at least the first semester. We'll see if something can be done for January. But I'm sure Taffy Charles, the head coach over there, is eager to see the pro seasoning of Lloyd Pandy on the, on the court in OUA action. Here's Merrick Claussen on the wing. Gets it down to Ashalu again, bullies his way through Landry. And they're going to call a foul on Landry, getting in the way of Ashalu there. Landry a little bit frustrated. You know what, I think he remembers that first hit. He got hit twice early. He probably didn't want another one. That's, you know, that's the thing with a guy that, with the size of, of Olu Asher Olu. He's a guy that can use his body and really wear you down. A couple of hits from him, and you start to think defending. I, I don't want this third. I don't want the fourth. It hurts. So, you know, you let a guy like that try and take a charge or, or just back off him a bit. Learning through pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's something I do. Whenever I go for a run or something, I realize, hey, that hurt my lungs. I'm not going to do that for six months. <laughs> It'll be a baseline inbound here, 14 on the clock for the Bandits. There's Manigat up top, Ashalu. Here's Merrick Klassen. On the roll is Ashalu, kicks it out for Newby. Good ball movement here into the corner. De Vivier with it, four on the clock. Trying to make something happen, that is blocked by Shaquille Keith. Hey, that was something we spoke about early with Shaq Keith, is just holding in the ball. He had a great kick out there. You want to play on the catch of the basketball. That way you keep the advantage that you have offensively. Holding the ball, you allow the defense to catch back up and everybody gets back in front of their man. We've seen that here. End up with a block shot. So it's 59-54 here. Minute 32 to go in the quarter as Hanlon's going to walk it up here. He's got Jabs Newby on him. Bench is calling out for a foul there. A push off on Hanlon, but no dice. Hanlon will Euro step off glass. That is a beautiful finish for Olivier Hanlon. He's so smooth, man. He is so smooth. I was just about to say he's having a relatively quiet night. I look at the stats, he still has nine points, so. It was the third quarter when he really got going in the game against Edmonton earlier this week as DeVivier 
responds there with a bucket off glass. Here's Hanlon once again to Pandy. He'll drive after pump faking, puts it up. Lloyd Pandy, that is good. He's up to eight points and six boards in the game with three assists. You know what, he looks a little raw. I can see the youth in him, but his toughness, you can't measure that. Manigat with it. He's got Pandy on him. Down to Ashalu. Eight on the clock. He's got Pierre Charles on him. Spins and an offensive foul there on Ashalu, who's been putting his body to work here in this quarter. That time called for an offensive foul. Yeah, I think he knows that he's inflicting on pain on everybody, so he's, <laughs> he's going right to it. Ashalu, of course, graduated from Oregon in 2012. Eight year pro. And Hanlon with it. Just about even shot clock, game clock. This should be the last possession of the quarter here. Here's Brahana Mescal with Newby in his shirt. Takes a screen from Pierre Charles. Gets into the paint. Has it knocked away and it's going the other way. Three seconds on the clock. Ashalu will put up the three. That's no good. And DeVivier can't get the put back. And the quarter will come to an end with Ottawa leading 63-56 over the Bandits. The fourth quarter in the Elam ending on the way here on CBC Gem and TSN 1200 in Ottawa. Elam ending is upon us. And they take the timeout to set the target score. up into the air, get it to go! Not there, Bucard in the corner for three. Eo Bucard at the buzzer, drains it, and the Niagara River Lions get out of here with a 93-92 victory. Well, when I was younger in high school, I was a pretty good athlete. Went to the provincial championships in most sports like volleyball, track, basketball, and of course, the goalie. But lately, I've been going up the stairs like Fred Sanford. That's why I use Inflamex. Remember, two M's, two X's. Inflamex is formulated to relieve joint pain, helps address pain and inflammation at the cellular level, and is GMO-free and allergen-free. I'm doing better with a little help from my friends at Bell Lifestyle Products. So you can do the things that you do best. Oh, yeah. After a series of blowouts to begin the CEBL Summer Series, we've got ourselves another close finish in the works here. 63-56, the Ottawa Blackjacks lead the Fraser Valley Bandits. Sean Woodley, Javon Shepard, and Amy Audibert on the sidelines here with you as we start the fourth quarter, six minutes away from the Elam ending, kicking in as Olivier Hanlon in the paint. Can't get that to go, and it's for the Bandits now. It's DeVivier walking it back. The other way, running it back, I should say. Forte tries to get it to go with left hand, no good. Rough night continues for the tournament's leading scorer. Tough. Hanlon you know to Keith, drives. He's fouled. And Shaq Keith, call for the offensive foul, sorry. It's gonna be Fraser Valley ball once again. We've seen a couple charges here tonight. Guys are just you know really dipping their shoulders and, and putting their head down and getting to the basket. They're able to set their feet and have a solid base to just go up, go up straight. We can avoid a couple of those charges. Charges. Jack Keith, of course, a defending CEBL champion with the Saskatchewan Rattlers last year. Played for Hamilton a bit last season, too. Here is DeVivier. That is stolen there by Lloyd Pandy, who goes the other way. Thomas Scrub to the corner. Olivier Hanlon on the run. That's no good. It's stolen back there on the miss. And 
Still Ottawa ball. Hamlin, another wide open three on the wing. That's no good. Rebound grabbed by Forte, who will push it himself. Cross courts to Vivier. He drives into the corner. Capers for three. That misses, and Keith has the rebound. Track meet opening up here to start the fourth quarter. Here's Pandy. He drives, picks his dribble up, and looks for an outlet. Can't find one. Gets it up top, but it's stolen there by DeVivier. And numbers here. Two on one as Forte swoops in with the left hand. Gets it on the board. His 12th points of the night as it's 63-58 for Ottawa. Play is getting extremely sloppy right now. I think the first team that's able to execute, you know, have some fundam be fundamentally sound um, is going to have a the best chance of closing this out. Hanlon sees two bodies on the baseline. It's off a of Bandit's player. It's going to be Ottawa ball. Seven on the shot clock. 63-58, 8 10 to play here. Thanks again for joining us on CBC Gem and on TSN 1200 in Ottawa. Guys are playing hard. Guys are playing hard. Guys are playing tough. So this is a time when you really have to lock them. Like in any sport, team that executes best down the stretch is a team that's usually going to win. Here's Johnny Brahana Mescal. Can't get it to go, but the offensive board there by Munis Tutu as he comes in and gets it to go. Or the team <laughs> that kills you with the offensive rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Klaassen. Drives hard, right hand. Gets Pierre Charles to jump, kicks to the corner. For three, Manigat, his fifth triple of the game, Jahens Manigat. That was, a, that was an extremely tough pass, left-handed cross court to Manigat from Klassen. 2-2 with it on the left wing. Manigat on him, takes a screen from Scrubs, swings it around. Pierre Charles directing traffic up top, seven on the clock. He's gonna drive himself, kicks to the corner, 2-2 for three. That pops out, Capers with it. They'll run now with Manigat on the wing. Bit of a deflection there, it's corralled by Cam Forte. He drives right-handed, spin move, and he's fouled. Pierre Charles is a bit late with that help. He was able to, if he was able to get there early and close the gap so that Forte was unable to, to spin between that, it would have been a, a much better play for them defensively. Non-shooting foul there, 14 on the clock as they get the inbound to Manigat. He brings it back up top. He's got 2-2 two -two on it with nine on the clock. Over to Klaassen at the free throw line. Little scooping finish, and that is good off glass. Great job. That was a great screen by Forte on the pin down action. Good job by Klaassen reading and getting to the middle of the key. Made a play, easy basket at the rim. We got ourselves a two-point game, 65-63. Ottawa leads. And that is going to go the other way as well. Bit of a miscue for Ottawa's offense. A foul then called on Shaquille Keith. And that will be Bandit's ball. It's the fourth foul on Keith as well. So keep an eye on that. He's going to take a seat here. This could be our closest game going into, into Elam. It could be. I mean, yesterday's game was an 11-point game before the Elam ending with Edmonton in the lead. And they kind of panicked, panicked a little bit. It got tied at one point before Xavier Moon hit the game winner to win 88-82. Funny Back. enough, Ottawa's, Ottawa's magic number has been 89. Both, both games that they have lost, that's been the Elam total. Merrick Clausen cans a three, looks at his bench, points at him. And there's a timeout called here by the Ottawa Blackjacks as it's now a one point lead for Fraser Valley. A reminder to tune in to the next Ottawa Blackjacks broadcast. That is August 2nd, Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on CBC Gem. Jason Tom and Joe Razzle will have that call for you. And on uh, Saturday, you'll have the next Fraser Valley broadcast as well as they take on the Hamilton Honey Badgers. That's going to go down at uh, on Saturday as well at 1.30 p.m. on CBC TV. Javon, you're going to be in the booth for that one. Yeah, absolutely. Should be fun. Should Look, be fun. Looking forward to that. If you're Ottawa here, you've lost the plot a little bit. You started this game off so well. Fraser Valley's hung around. They've, they've dug into the lead and now taken their first lead of the game. What do you do to sort of get things back for Ottawa? Slow down. Slow down. You have to really regroup right now and just just be fundamentally sound. That's what you know was working for you early on, defensively and offensively. Again, know your scouting reports. They've got kind of gotten away from that. 
Forte hasn't really gotten going like they like he was expected to. Mm -hmm. But again, like focus on the guys that are on the perimeter, guys that are making plays right now. You know, you have to stop those leaks before you can really think ahead. And again, slow down. Less is more at this point. Absolutely. They hit the floor once again here as it'll be Brahana Miskel, Pandy, Hanlon, Scrub, and Landry who try to get this lead back here for Ottawa. For the Bandits, it's Capers, Forte, Devivier, Klassen, and Manicat. So the heavy hitters on the floor here for both sides. And Lloyd Pandy getting some crunch time duty in his first pro game. After Frazier being Valley called up zone. to fill in. Here's Landry down on the baseline. He's surveying into the paint, tries to find Scrub in the corner. Bit of an errant pass, not in the shooter's pocket. So they get it into Pandy. He posts up, tries to go up. It's blocked there by Capers. It'll stay with Ottawa, only four on the clock, though. I don't know if that's a shot you wanted, but I respect the courage. Fred <laughs> Rally did a good job showing zone coming out of that timeout there, but just, it was actually a man. They showed zone and, and split up into man. And the inbound goes to Landry in the middle. He's fouled going up. They're saying it's on the floor. So it'll be uh, 14, a fresh 14 on the clock here for the Blackjacks. See, this is where this is where you want guys you know, to huddle up and, and you know talk about what we're gonna do next. We're on to the next play. Both teams were kind of dismantled at that point. Landry has it up to Pandy. He's got it on the right wing with nine on the shot clock. Tries to find Brahana Miskell as he gets free from Mani uh, Manigat. He drives left-handed, or right-handed, right, right -handed, going to his left. Can't get it to go, though. You know, I imagine he's a little gassed. That, was, that looked like his legs just weren't on, under him. He's played about 27 minutes tonight, so, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough again. This is where a guy like Phil Scrub, just having that guy in a rotation would be helpful. Cam Forte underneath, and is fouled there by Landry as Forte goes up. He's going to get a trip to the line is Cam Forte. Again, 30 points in the last game, 28 in the opener. Been much more quiet tonight, has Cam Forte. Just 12 points on six of 14 shooting. Kind of gotten his footing a little bit in the second half here. Didn't get his first bucket until about three minutes left in the second quarter. Right, and this, you know, this is the time when you want, this is money time, so if you're gonna be get going at any point, this will be the right time. Close it out, this is money time. He hits the first here. We're just a minute, 29 seconds away from Elam ending time. The first stoppage under four minutes will initiate the Elam ending. The clocks will shut off. Here is Olivier Hanlon. He gets it to go off the missed free throw by Forte. We're all tied up at 67s. How fitting, considering an Ottawa team is taking part here. <laughs> Here's Manigat. The leading scorer for the Bandits with 18 points. That's bobbled. And they're going to say that is Fraser Valley ball. Oz Genty disagrees. 10 seconds. It'll be a baseline inbound here for Merrick Claussen. He, does, Ooh, well, he just gets it in. Just Forte it gets it there. He puts it up left hand. Camp Forte, there we go. With a very nice finish, 69-67. Here's Hanlon with it. One thing with Forte, when the game's on the line, he wants the basketball. He wants <laughs> to close it out. Hanlon fell through an over-the-head pass to Brandon Misko, who misses the three. Now Manigat for three the other way. Can't get that to fall. And now Ottawa the other way. Brandon Misko on the run. In traffic, that is stopped in the air there by Manigat. It rolls out of bounds and will be Ottawa ball. Oh, a foul's gonna be called there. Brandon Mescal didn't hear the whistle. He's gassed. He is, he is gassed. He's pulling the shorts. <laughs> a flopping warning against Brandon Mescal. He's still gonna go to the line to shoot two. Chance to tie this up. Junior Kudugan, sorry, checks back into the game. I think, you know, for me, he's the, he's the, Forte is the heart, Junior Kudugan is the soul of this team. Brahana Miskell hits the first, 69-68, 34 right. seconds to go until Elam time kicks in. What's your prediction? 
You're asking me to predict a coin flip. <laughs> <laughs> Heads or tails? I don't know. Here is uh, Kadugan walking it up. What's your prediction, Chavon? I'll say this. The team that wants this win more wins. I'll leave it there. That's a hedge. I, I <laughs> <laughs> Down the lane, here's Devivier in the paint. Forte. Ottawa's calling for a travel. Not going to get it. Forte left hand. Can't get that to go. Rebounded by Scrub. Back the other way. Could be the last possession before we get under that four-minute time. Hanlon drives. Yeah. Offensive foul called. Still five seconds until that Elam ending time kicks in. So we will get one more possession here for Fraser Valley at least. Could have a few more if there's no stoppages, but. Kadugan did a really good job there playing Hanlon for the right to left penetration. Got his feet set, got in front of him, got his feet set, took it in his chest charge. Hanlon so far tonight, 11 points, three boards, three assists. Balanced scoring effort, four of the five starters for the Black Jackson double figures. Kadugan yeah. walking it up here. 16 on the shot clock. Merrick Clausen with it. A travel against Clausen, and that is going to initiate Elam. Here we and go. The tie, Here we go. The tie score <laughs> of 69-69. We are in for an extremely nice finish here to this game as the Elam ending takes over, and we'll remind you exactly how the Elam ending is going to work. We've got the clock shut off entirely. The shot clock's still running. The clocks don't matter, though. We're playing to the target score. Both of these teams at 69. The target score is 80, or sorry, 78. Doing math in my head. Not very good <laughs> at it, as it turns out. That's why I've been broadcasting. Either way, 78's going to be the target score here. First team to 78 wins. This is basically a game to nine starting at zero. This is extremely exciting. We haven't seen this happen yet. An Elam ending starting with a tie score. This should be awesome, Javon. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. This is the, the closest we've had. Um, you know, and both teams have a lot on the line. Obviously, Fraser Valley, they're looking to go 3-0 and and set themselves up for, you know, a 1-2 seed finish going into playoffs. On the other hand, Ottawa 0-2. Backs against the walls. With a win tonight, they're right back in the middle of the pack. There's a lot here. There's a lot on the line here. There's a lot here. You know, Fraser Valley, if they can win, they, they move into a clear first place ahead of the 2-1 and one Guelph Nighthawks as well as the 2-1 and one Stingers. And that fight for those buys is really important because there's not a lot of time off in this condensed series. If you can get that extra day off for the semis that you're, or for the quarters and not have to play that at all, also get rid of the randomness of one knockout game, right. that is hugely valuable. And Fraser Valley can put themselves in a driver's seat for a bye to the semis if they can win here. Ottawa, meanwhile, doesn't want to fall into sole possession of last place because last place of the seven teams does not make it into the knockout round. So a lot on the line here as the Elam ending kicks off as we have some uh, very intense music playing. Shouts to DJ Jukebox for that. This is, uh, I'm ready, man. I'm so excited for this. This is great. This is it. This is it. Target score of 78. The Elam ending begins now. Fraser Valley showing some zone again. The last time they did this, they came out of it with a, in a man-to-man -man showed zone. They came back to a man-to-man -man set. So it would be interesting to see where they go with this right now. Once again, the beauty of the Elam ending is that in a close game like this, you might see a lot of fouling late in the game in the regular sort of to the end of the clock sort of style. In this, it's just distilled basketball, the purest form of the game. And it should be excellent as these teams just get started to, to uh, just get ready to get started here. It's Pandy, Hanlon, Pierre Charles, Brahanna Miskell, and Thomas Scrub on the floor for the Ottawa Blackjacks. It is the Bandits rolling out Forte, Duvivier, Capers, Klassen, and Manigat. If you're Ottawa right now, you cannot let Fraser Valley speed you up. Force them to play defense in the half court. If they speed you up right now, you're playing into their game. So that's, that's the tough part. And if you're Fraser Valley, speed them up. <laughs> <laughs> speed them up, pressure them, get deflections, get your hands on the ball, and get out and run. Get out and run. That's what you do. Stick to your identity. 69-69 the score here. Again, the target score is 78. Tell a friend if you're watching and they're not watching this, tell them to tune into cbcsports.ca or TSN 1200 in Ottawa right now as we get going. Brahanna Miskell down to Pierre Charles. On the block, he's surveying, he finds Brahanna Miskell. Back to Pierre Charles, little two-man game. 10 on the clock. Great job by Davivier de denying 
Brandon Misko. Oh. And Hanlon knocks down the triple coming Hanlon. around the screen. 72-69, just six points away from the target score he now still hasn't broke for the Blackjacks. Manigat. To Claussen on the left wing. Down to Forte in the post. A couple bodies come his way. That's swatted away by Thomas Scrub coming as the help defender. For Hannah Miskell the other way. Big He'll pull it out and reset. He drives right-handed, tries to throw up a little oh scooping finish. Goodness. That is a beautiful finish for Johnny Brahetta Miskell. Five points away now from the Elam ending. Right hand, right foot finish. 74-69 <laughs> now. The Bandits need a bucket on this trip. Here's Capers back to Manigat. Denies the screen from Forte. Forte up top now with it. Over to Capers. Thinks about driving, passes it over to Claussen for three. That's no good. Battle for the offensive board. Brahana Miskell comes down with it. Big trip here for Ottawa. Here's Pandy down on the low block. Cross court pass. Hanlon for three. No good. Fight for the board. That is going to be Fraser Valley ball. Target score is 78. I misspoke. They're just four points away from the target score on Ottawa. If Pandy, Not five. If Pandy would have, if somebody would have told Pandy that he was going to be playing in the final minutes of this game, he would have thought they were lying to him. <laughs> the rookie, the rookie. That's impressive. He's looked really, really good, filling in for Philip Scrub. Here's Vivier driving, tries to get it to go off glass. He's fouled. He's going to have a shot to go to the line for two easy points. And you can't have, you don't, that's the penetration you don't want. That's an easy basket. But fortunately for, uh, fortunately for Ottawa, they missed it. You can sense the intensity in this building right now. There's no fans, but that does not matter. These guys are all feeling the pressure of the Elam ending. As the Blackjacks will go have a little conference down at their end as Duvivier gets ready to fire up these free throws. Both teams look to get the group together. Come to a timeout, I believe. I'm not sure who called it or if they're just taking some time to chat. But either way, four points away now, Ottawa. I misspoke earlier. They were four, not five points away from the target score of 78. Fraser Valley still stuck on 69. You know what? You, ha you still have to believe in Fraser Valley because this is a team I spoke with Kyle Julius. These guys were doing scouting reports on Zoom in, the, in early April. Mm -hmm. You know, every time he had his guys on Zoom, there, every time, you know, Ottawa would sign a player or, or um, Hamilton would sign a player or any of these teams would sign a player, they got a full scouting report and they would sit on Zoom and break down the player's skill set. That's, that's extremely impressive. So you ha you'd have to think that this team has chemistry, and especially in a situation like this coming down the stretch, they can pull it together. To Vivier hits the first, the first points on the board in the Elam ending for Fraser Valley. Two for two, 74-71 still, anybody's game here. But stops are paramount right now for Fraser Valley. Shaquille Keith with it, he'll bring it up here. He's got DeVivier guarding him as he crosses half court, 18 on the shot clock to Brahana Miskell. On the right near the Canada Basketball logo. He takes the screen from Pierre Charles, gets to the mid range, tries to find Pierre Charles underneath. That's deflected away, but it's out of bounds off a of bandit. Five seconds on the clock here for the Blackjacks to get a shot up. This is, this is a nail biter. I almost feel like I want to be on the court playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing different areas where I could, where I could do something. It's the beauty of the Elam ending. Stress, chaos, all the beautiful basketball feelings we love. That is stolen away there by DeVivier. On the run is Capers. He's got Pierre Charles with him, but Capers lays it in. 74-73. And we're really tight here, getting closer to that target score of 78. And this is what we're talking about. If you're Ottawa, you do not want to be sped up. You want to get into the half court, focus and execute in the half court. Force Fraser Valley to play half court defense. Cam Forte is going to be called for a reach-in foul here. As... Hamlin was trying to drive. The sideline inbound will come here for the Blackjacks. And it'll be Brahana Mescal with the ball. 14 on the clock. Into scrub. Back up to Brahana Mescal. Drives right. Throws it up off glass. No good. Grab there by Forte going the other way. Chance to take the lead here for the Bandits. Forte will collect himself. 
Thinks about driving, but instead tosses it off to Capers. He'll post up for Hannah Mescal, toss it up high. 14 on the clock, back down to Forte on the left block. A couple bodies come his way, he throws up a lefty shot. That is tapped in there by Capers, using those FIBA rules around the rim to put it in. 75-74, Fraser's a three-pointer away from winning this game. The target score again, 78. Here's Hanlon, he drives into the paint, off glass, that's good! Foul there by Capers, a three-point play opportunity for Olivier Hanlon. Back and forth action here in the Elam ending between Ottawa and Fraser Valley. You know what, that's just a tough play. I thought he could have done a better job actually waiting for the screen to be set and using the screen. I'm just giving himself a bit more of an advantage, but nonetheless, he's a really talented player, can really score the basketball, made the play and won. So, you know, Fraser Valley could have done a better job of getting over in the help side just to you know, get the ball out of his hands once he, once he created that advantage for himself, get into the basket. Kind of thankful for the free throw here just to catch the breath a little bit. This has been <laughs> incredible action back and forth. With this made bucket, both teams are now within one possession of winning the game. Ottawa's one point away, Fraser Valley a three-pointer away. So do you go for a three in the high risk here to just end it, to keep it from Ottawa having a chance Stick to score? Stick to your principles. Stick to your principles. Trust your defense. A score and trust your defense. Here's DeVivier. He drives. Goes up with the right hand. He's fouled. And he's going to have a chance to pull to 77 and tie this game and make it next bucket wins. That's what you want, is it not? <laughs> Need a towel. I got to dab off over here. <laughs> DeVivier to I the line to shoot now that, now that we're actually in a game that's this close, I think the only thing I would add to this Elam ending is win by two. Okay, <laughs> fair <by> enough. <laughs> but we talked earlier, you were unsure. We're converting you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over to the dark side. It's the right side of history, man. There's the main free throw by DeVivier. It's next bucket win, 77-66. Ottawa will bring it up with now a chance to win the game. You have two really big time scores in Hanlon and Bernice Merkel. Here's Hanlon, 14 on the shot clock. He'll drive to the corner, Thomas Scrub into the paint, back to Hanlon, he drives as well. Mid-range jumper for the win, no good. Bobbled around, Forte with it, back the other way. Here's Manigat, Kadugan with it as he crosses half court. This guy knows how to close out games, he's crunch. Kadugan underneath, Forte for the win, no good. Tapped around, rebound by Ottawa. And he falls to the ground. The foul there is called. Red 30. On Kadugan. Lloyd Pandy's shaking off. It looks like he rolled an ankle a little bit. We are... Kadugan's calling for a replay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think we had a replay know if that's as part of the FIBA <laughs> rules here, unfortunately. They're unsure who the foul was on. It's going to be two shots for Ottawa. A chance to put this away for Johnny Brahana Mescal. You want pressure in a free throw. This is it. What are you thinking if you're Brahana Mescal walking up to take a free throw here? Timeout's being called here, so they'll talk things over. You know, interesting is that we still haven't had, if if he hits these free throws, we still haven't had the team that was um, trailing going into into Elam. Well, no one was trailing here. It was all tied at 69, so. Was, yes, you know, there you're was no trailing. Correct. Yeah, absolutely so. correct. Yeah. I mean, it leads, that's why my heart's pounding right now is because it's been tied and so close <laughs> all the way through. You know what I was thinking? They haven't, they've, they've trailed uh, all games. So. Yeah. yeah. So when you have a free throw like this, I mean, you've probably taken big free throws in your career to close out games and things like that. I mean, how do you control the nerves there? It's, it's tough because yeah. you, you're already thinking, you know, if I, if I knock this down, I close this game out. So this is where the greats are actually able to just center themselves and, and, and just neutralize and be relaxed, shoot the free throw. Because you, you really can't look too far ahead. Uh, that'll shake you up a bit. So Johnny Brahana Miskel is set to come to the line here. He has 18 points to lead the way for Ottawa in this game, followed by Olivier Hanlon with 17. 
And if he can hit one of his two free throws here, the Ottawa Blackjacks are going to pick up their first win, a crucial win here in the CEBL Summer Series. For Hannah Mescal, for the win. It's good. The Ottawa Blackjacks win 78 to 76 and close out a very tense Elam ending finish here and move to one and two while the Fraser Valley Bandits no longer the sole undefeated team in the CEBL as they fall to two and one in a tie with Guelph and Edmonton atop the standings. That win there for Ottawa makes things extremely interesting as it pertains to the buys and to who's going to end up coming seventh and missing out on the knockout rounds, Javon. This can really turn the league upside down at this point because we played three games um, each team has played three games, three more, I believe. Uh, this can really flip things around. Like it, it changes a lot for Fraser Valley as well because they're no longer in just the quote-unquote safe zone. Um, so th you know it's going to be interesting what happens come down the stretch going into playoffs. And it, it's unfortunate because a team that ends up bumped out is probably going to be a, a very quality team. Absolutely. I think, and this is definitely going to come down to points difference. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see the point differential, as you mentioned, is the number one tiebreaker. And we're going to send things down in just a second here. Amy Audibert is sidelined with Olivier Hanlon to talk about the win for Ottawa. Amy. Thank you, Sean. Olivier, you guys didn't get off to the summer series start you wanted, but what does this type of win mean to your team moving forward now? Oh, it's good, man. We just needed, you know, a, a win to start it off, and uh, we played good defense, and we are able to squeeze it today. This was our first game going into Elam tied. So we just wrapped up. Tell us, how tight was it out there? What did it feel like? It was tight, you know. Uh, coming into the game, these guys are 2-0. Uh, you know, they play really hard. So we just had to be ready for a dogfight, and, you know, we won this one. Speaking of dogfight, you've, you've got a, a player on your team who just joined yesterday. He just finished his first year playing CIS U Sport Hoops. What are you going to go tell Lloyd, or Pandy yeah. when you get in there? Yeah, uh, he, You know, he's good, man. He, he came out here. He's pretty young, but he was aggressive, and, he kind of gave us a spark just on the offense, and also he got some key rebounds, offensive rebounds, just to keep it going. So they just kind of changed the momentum of the game. I was playing terrible, but, you know, a guy like that helps out a team uh, to win. All right. Well, we appreciate your time. Good luck moving forward. Thank you. We'll go back to you guys. Thanks, Amy, and thanks to Olivier Hanlon for taking the time there. He finishes the game with 17 points, three boards, three assists. Lloyd Pandy, eight points, six boards, three assists. As we mentioned, a year one U Sports player for Carlton coming in and making an impact here. Javon, final thoughts from this game here. A wonderful finish to end this, uh, the, the closest Elam ending we've had so far in the CUBL Summer yeah. Series. Absolutely. But, well, you know, what I was most impressed with is that both these teams stuck to their game plans for for Ottawa, they did a really good job of focusing on, on Forte and forcing him into tough shots, not, not allowing him to get the ball in his, in his comfort zone. And I think that's what really, you know, set them over, you know, put them over the edge tonight as well. You know, Fraser Valley, did a, they weren't as good as they could have been starting the game, starting the half. Started out with an 11-0, sorry, 11-0 start for Ottawa. And, and that kind of, you know, that kind of slow start. Um, kind of sets you back. That was a fast Elam ending as well. That went quickly. It's not like yesterday when we saw Edmonton take a lot of time, kind of panic, kind of kick it around a little bit. A really excellent finish. Both teams executing well down the stretch. And the Ottawa Blackjacks come out with a 78-76 victory. A huge win for them as they get their first win here in the CEBL Summer Series. Tune in for the next CEBL broadcast tomorrow as the 2-1 and one Edmonton Stingers take on the 1-2 and two Niagara River Lions. Now they're the team looking for a big win here <laughs> after they've dropped a couple and are in need of a win. That one's going to go down at 3 p.m. Jason Tom and Joe Razzle will be on the call for that one. Part of a double header you can see here on CBC Gem and CBC Sports.ca. Javon, this was a blast, man. Thank you so much for being here with Thank me. You. Big thanks to Amy Audibert for her great work on the sidelines as well. That is going to do it for us here tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you tomorrow with more from the CEBL Summer Series here at Meridian Center in St. Catharines. <laughs>